Hello again. This is part two. Okay. Um, it will do you well to watch the first video. I'm going to link it in the description box, and this one is going to be in the other video. In the first video, we looked uh, over about loving your enemies. And we saw that, number one, that it was in context to the Millennial Kingdom. Because in the Millennial Kingdom, it's all works. Okay? And for today, we are to bless those who persecute us and pray, pray for those who uh, persecute us and stuff like that, okay? Um, we are to do that by adhering to the scriptures and sharing with them the truth of the scriptures, okay? But now we're going to get into another thing, okay? Ooh, excuse me. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Psalm 139, okay? Psalm 139. Psalm 139. Follow me along, okay? O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. God knows every man. Not through a relationship, but because they are in the book of the living. Okay? He knows all men. He knows what's in every man's heart and mind, okay? But he doesn't know them through a relationship, okay? Let's continue. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. You ain't going to get away from God. There's nothing you're going to hide from the Lord. Yea. The darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. You ain't keeping no secrets from the Lord. You understand? For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee, when I was made in secret, and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Okay? David here is describing his relationship with the Lord. Okay? And for us today in our instruction and in righteousness, um, we have the Lord living within us. Okay? We understand that. But now... Look at this. Look at this. Verse 19, on to the close of this chapter. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men. For they speak against thee, Wickedly, not ignorantly, wickedly. 
Okay? Can someone speak ignorant, uh, speak wickedly in ignorance? Yes. But you got to remember. You have to remember. Once that individual becomes aware of the truth, they are no more ignorant. And plus it says, for they speak against the wickedly, intentionally, not in ignorance. Okay? And thine enemies take thy name in vain. Thine enemies. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? Oh. And am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Mine enemies. Verse 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Self-examination. He's saying to the Lord, Know my heart, try me, and know my thoughts. How do we do that today? The scriptures. The scriptures. Self-examination. Examine thyself. Okay? You get that? Yes. Yes. Now, go back up to verse 20. For they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies... Take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Now see, there are those out there who will take this. Okay, this is, uh, this is a, for a different dispensation. Yes, but you have to remember this. Okay? You have to remember this. What is perfect hatred? Perfect hatred is what? I count them mine enemies. The enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, are our enemies. Okay? Hating them with perfect hatred. And before someone goes off on a tear and says, well, um, it's because they don't think like I do, or they're not dressed the same way I do. No, 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 no. No, it's not like that. Because some of you, when you hear this, you'll say like, okay, well, I'm of the church of the living God, or you might be calling yourself a Christian. It's like, well, that my shit, well, hey, then I can hate someone just because they think differently or look differently than I do or speak differently. No, no, no. Because search me, oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. How does that, how do we do that today? Again, through the scriptures. Okay? And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Okay? Do you see that? Verses 23 and verse 24 are excluding your personal preference or your personal dislikes. Okay? or your personal in, uh, interpretation of things. The enemies of our Lord are our enemies. Okay? The enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, are our enemies. Do you understand? Do you understand that? Okay? Now, go to Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 18. You know, the worst thing you can do to someone who is an enemy of the Lord is to withhold from them truth. But then again, there comes a time when that line is crossed. Okay? Thank you, Bob. I'm writing that down so I remember to put the link for that video in this one. But there comes a time when someone crosses a line where they have made their choice and given themselves over onto the devil. Okay? They have made their choice. They are far gone. They have been given over onto a reprobate mind. There are those out there 
like that, who are the sworn enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ. Those are our enemies, because they are, they are the enemies of our Lord, and they have made their choice. See. Go to Second Chronicles, chapter eighteen. Second Chronicles, chapter eighteen, one verse, one verse. <clears throat> Uh, uh, hold on one second, brethren. Sorry about that, brethren. Second Chronicles 19. I don't know why I wrote that down there like that. But uh, actually, um, Second Chronicles 18, verse 1. Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance and joined affinity with Ahab. Ahab was an ungodly king. Ahab is in hell. You can read all about Ahab on your own time, about how wicked he was. His wife was Jezebel. Jezebel, a type of the Roman Catholic Church. Okay. Now, 2 Chronicles 19, verses 1 on to verse 4. Okay. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Who? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee, in that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land and hast prepared thine heart to seek God. And Jehoshaphat dwelt at Jerusalem, and he went out again through the people from Beersheba to Mount Ephraim and brought them back unto the Lord God of their fathers. But look at verse 2. Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Now we see in the Pauline epistles, which, uh, which crosses dispensational lines. When your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat, or give him food to eat. When he is thirsty, give him drink. In so doing, you'll put a uh, heap uh, coals of hot fire upon his head. Yes, yes. But are we to love them that hate the Lord? That hate the Lord. That have made their choice. And are the Lord's sworn enemies. Are we to love them that hate the Lord? You might be thinking, well, uh, he says in Matthew chapter 5 to love your enemies. That's why you need to watch the first video. Okay? That's why you need to watch the first video. He's talking specifically about the millennial kingdom, which is all works. See? Okay? Instruction in righteousness? Yes. Doctrinally, that's for the millennial kingdom, people. Are we to love those that hate hate our Lord and have chosen, made their choice, and have far gone the past of uh, the point of no return? Hmm. hmm. Go to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Let's look at this about the enemies. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 11. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 11. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Clearly speaking unto saved people. Okay? By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Those who are saved, we are sealed until the day of redemption. We have the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit. God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, dwells within us. Okay? 
For when we were for when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, those who are saved, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We are saved sinners. You ain't saved, you're a lost sinner. Okay? Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, pay attention to this, for if when we were enemies, oh, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Okay? Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we, the saved, have now received the atonement. Look at verse 10. Look at verse 10. For if when we were enemies... He's talking about saved people. But when we were enemies, not saved. So, someone who is not saved is an enemy of our Lord? Really? Really? And again, watch the previous video. Those who are enemies to us, how do we bless those who persecute us? By showing them truth through the scriptures. By the way we adhere to the scriptures, okay? But the point is, brethren, come on, don't look at me, look at verse 10. For if when we were enemies, oh, oh, really? Really? Okay? Go to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. Okay? Romans chapter 11 verses 25 on to verse 36. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. This is the time of the Gentiles, okay? And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. Now, it says right there that the Jewish people are enemies of the gospel for our sake. And when you go start thinking, it's like, oh, well, that means I can hate the Jewish people and be against them, replacement theology. you got to be very careful, boy. What does that say? But... As touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. Because it says, Whoso toucheth you, toucheth the apple of my eye. I just paraphrase that. Go find that. Okay? The Jew is the apple of God's eye. We, the Gentile, were grafted into their tree to make the Jew jealous. Salvation is of the Jew. Okay? The Jew is God's chosen people. Still, okay? It's time of Jacob's trouble. It's the time for the Jews, okay? Not the church of the living God, okay? So don't you think, just because they are enemies of the gospel for our sake, that it's okay for you to start hating Jewish people because they are the enemies of the gospel. But the, what does that say? But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. 
you got to be really careful. The Jew are God's chosen people to this day. The apple of his eye. Hence the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob, Israel, hello. Okay? Be careful. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief, even so have these not also now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments, for his and his ways past finding out! For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Who, who or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him? And it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him, and through him, and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever, to whom be glory forever. Amen. When you experience personally the, the hatred that uh, some of the Jewish people have of we, the Church of the Living God, how do you behave during that? I've had a Jewish woman spit right between my eyes after I shared with her the gospel. Shared with her um, how our Lord Jesus Christ is the Passover. Oh, she didn't like that. Spit right between my eyes. Okay? Okay? I've seen that in witnessing on to the Jewish people. Okay? I've seen that. But during that, adhering to the scriptures and letting them alone, for they are the blind leaders of the blind. Okay? Be careful with trying to twist those uh, who are the enemies of our Lord are our enemies and using that as a crux for you to be anti-Shemitic. Got to be very careful with that one, brother, sister. You got to be very careful with that, okay? Because let's read in Romans chapter 11, verses 18 on to verse 24. We have to remember the importance of the Jew. Salvation is of the Jew. He was not sent uh, but unto the lost sheep of Israel. First. It is to the Jew first. You have to remember that. Because in Romans 11 verses 18 on to verse 24. Boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, the Jews, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Behold therefore the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness otherwise thou also shalt be cut off and if and they also if they abide not still in unbelief shall be grafted in for God is able to graft them in again for if thou wert cut out of the olive tree which is wild by nature and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree how much more shall these which be the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree what does this mean? It is a very dangerous thing for you, Church of the Living God, and even you lost devils. It is a very dangerous thing for you to hate the Jewish people. And you might be saying, well, 
There is no respect of persons. Uh, uh, there, God is not a respecter of persons today. Uh, salvifically, there is neither Jew nor Greek. You're right. You're right. Salvifically, as pertaining unto salvation, okay, there is neither Jew nor Greek. Okay, we are all one in Christ Jesus. That's right. You're right. You're right. Culturally, ethnically, God is a God of distinction. Okay? Yes, but during the time of Jacob's trouble, during the time of Jacob's trouble, it is on to the Jewish people. It's for the Jews. You know, some of you have just got to swallow this pill. The Jew are God's chosen people. Period. Well, you could say, well, God's racist. <laughs> or God's favoring a kindred over others. Yeah. Yeah. You take that up with them, I dare you. And see how it goes for you. Okay? Careful. Careful. Okay. Now first Corinthians fifteen. First Corinthians fifteen. First Corinthians fifteen verses twenty four on to verse thirty two. Okay. First Corinthians chapter uh, fifteen verses twenty four on to verse thirty two. Uh, let's read um, from verse twenty three. Under verse 32. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. For he hath put all things under his feet. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I skipped verse 26. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And who has the power of death? The devil. Okay? For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is expected, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Else, what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage is it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. But, looking back, at verse 25 and verse 26. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Okay? And now, go to Proverbs. Uh, wait, 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 wait. And with that, go to Proverbs. Chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8, verses 32 on to verse 36. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise, and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, 
and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. All they that hate me love death. You hate the Lord, you love death. You're an enemy of our Lord Jesus Christ. You love death. You love death. <laughs> and it says here in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 26, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And remember it says that uh, who has the power of death? The devil. Scare you with death. All those that hate the Lord love death. You're an enemy of our Lord Jesus Christ. You love death. And in him was life. We have eternal life with our Lord Jesus Christ. Those of us who are saved. Born again, you know, converted of the church of the living God. You don't. You love death. Now go to Philippians. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Verses 17 on to verse 21. Philippians chapter 3, verses 17 on to verse 21. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of of the cross of Christ. And yes, brethren, it is sad that there are those who hate our Lord, who are, the, who are the enemies of our Lord. Hence, they are our enemies. It is sad that someone would choose this world, Satan, the devil, over eternal life with our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and ruling and reigning with him in, our, in the millennial kingdom. It is sad. Yes. But see, hating with perfect hatred, the enemies of our Lord are our enemies. That is what is perfect hatred. You're an enemy of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Guess what? You're my enemy. And here Paul says, For many of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross, cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, fleshly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things, whose glory is their shame. Just believe. Repentance is going from unbelief to belief. There is no changed life. You don't have to. You see? For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ who shall change our vile body and that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working where, uh, whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Look at verse 18. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Go now to Colossians chapter 1, 
verses 21 and verse 29. Colossians chapter 1, verses 21 and verse 29. And you, that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled enemies in your mind by wicked works in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight if ye continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church, not the buildings, the people. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery, which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ is in you. Yeah, ye are sealed unto the day of redemption, sealed with the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that spirit. Jesus Christ, God our Father. Hello? Hello? Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom. What is wisdom? The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Job 28, 28. Do you have that memorized yet? Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Look at that in verse 21. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your own mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. Enemies by wicked works in your mind? Oh, what does that mean? Go to, very familiar verse, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 3. Okay, Ephesians chapter 2, oh no, Ephesians chapter 2, yes, verses 1 on to verse 3. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Who is the prince of the power of the air? Uh, Satan. Okay? If our gospel be hid, it is hid to those who are lost. Lest the God of this world, who is the God of this world, the little G God of this world, Satan. Okay? Among whom also we all have our conversation in times past in the lusts of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Enemies in your mind, children of wrath. Do you get it? What does that mean? And also in Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Let's 
Sorry about that, brother. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the admonition, but bring them up but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Bring them up in uh, bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Nurture and admonition of the Lord. Okay, uh, that was a little out of place. I misread my notes. Beg your pardon. But go now to Colossians chapter three. Colossians chapter three. Colossians chapter three, verse six. Actually, let's read Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. Okay? Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Put down. Mortification. Okay? Uh, mortification. Put down. Okay? Fornication. Uncleanness. Inordinate, inordinate affection. Evil concupiscence. And covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. Children of wrath, children of disobedience. What does that mean? You hear the true gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Repentance towards God Faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. You come to our Lord Jesus Christ, broken and contrite. It's called godly sorrow. And you believe on him. And in that, you will call on the name of the Lord. Okay? You come to him broken and contrite. Repentance. Repenting of your self-righteousness. And you are sorry that your sins put him on the cross. Not that you got caught. That's godly sorrow. Okay? When one comes to you preaching the true Jesus Christ of the authorized version of scriptures and true repentance, okay? The true gospel. You reject that. You're a child of wrath. You're a child of disobedience. God's wrath is upon you. Hence, you're an enemy of the Lord. Now, see, once you hear the true gospel presented to you, you are not ignorant. You cannot claim innocency. Okay? You have been made aware. You reject that. God's wrath is for you. The love of God is Christ and him crucified. God's love is not for you if you reject the gospel. Okay? His wrath is for you. His love is not for you. Because it says, God so loved, past tense, that he gave. Okay? You don't come to the Lord through Calvary, the cross. You don't meet him there. But climbeth up some other way. God's wrath is for you. I.e., you are his enemy. Those who are ignorant, that's a different thing. Children before the age of accountability, that's a different thing. Okay? But once you become made aware of the true gospel, and you reject that, you're God's enemy. You're the enemy of God if you reject the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Hence, you easy believers and heretics, you're the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, you're my enemy. Roman Catholicism 
They are the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, Roman Catholicism is my enemy. Do you get it? Hating them with perfect hatred? Whoever is the enemy of the Lord is our enemy? Perfect hatred, do you get it? Do you get it? Okay? Okay. Now, a little bit more on that. Go to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Verses 28. On to verse 32. Close out that chapter. Romans chapter 1. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. God will give you over to a reprobate mind. You reject the gospel? Continuing, rejecting, rejecting, rejecting? You reject the gospel one time. You're God's enemy. It's that simple. You reject the gospel one time, you're God's enemy. And what does it say here? And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, such as being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, Murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, right there, haters of God, haters of God. If you hate God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, you are my enemy. And God's love is not for you if you hate God, I'm sure. What, you're going to climb up some other way? He who does that is a thief and a robber. Read John chapter 10 on your own time sometime. I double dog dare you. Okay? But backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, posters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Like some of the of my enemies who personally hate me. They'll go after anyone. They'll go after anyone who is like-minded like them. You know, lost and of the devil. Because misery likes company. And these wicked, evil, easy believism heretics who are the enemies of our Lord and my enemies, okay? They're looking for them who have pleasure in unrighteousness. Like-minded. Do you realize... How dangerous it, is, dangerous it is for you to be the enemy of our Lord. And you see, there's no middle ground, dear friend. You're either on the Lord's side or you're his enemy. There's no middle ground. There is no option C. Which one are you? Huh? Huh? Go to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 on to verse 26. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 on to verse 26. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, 
variants, emulations, rap, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I, I, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Marks of the false. They can talk a good game. Some of them can even do great things, uh, great studies and whatnot in their in their pulpits, spot on in the scriptures. But see, that's a facade. How are they away from that? Okay. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Dear friend, dear friend, if you are the enemy of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are my enemy. And if you are the enemy of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are the enemy of the church of the living God. Hence, perfect hatred is counting the Lord's enemies for our enemies. Okay? And remember what we looked at in the previous video. He sendeth, uh, he lets the sun shine on the evil and the good. He gives rain unto the evil and the good. Just paraphrase that, okay? And if our enemy hunger, give him bread to eat. If he's thirsty, give him water to drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. Make it worse for him. And also, adhering to the scriptures and preaching the scriptures. Okay? Perfect hatred is whosoever is the enemy of our Lord is our enemy. Those who are not saved. Do you get it? Now does that give us the right to go out there and be a total jerk and a putz to people? No. 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 We bless them by telling them the truth. By how we adhere our lives onto the gospel, onto the scriptures. And you don't use that for your own petty little devices. It's the scriptures, brethren. It's the scriptures. It's the scriptures. Do you understand that? Do you love them who hate our Lord? Or are they your enemies? We are to abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Let him, let him eschew evil. Avoid it. The enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ, brethren, sisters, church of the living God, are our enemies. And also remember, which we looked at in the previous video, what happens when you fight fire with fire? What wins? Don't overcome evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. What is good? The scriptures. What is good? There is none good save one. But God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Do you get it? Go to Titus, chapter 3. Titus, chapter 3.
Titus chapter 3. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to, uh, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, shewing all meekness unto all men. That doesn't mean wimpy. You don't overburden people. You don't overload them because there's only so much. You know, you give them a little morsels. Okay? For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Okay? Now someone who has chosen and gone past that point of no return, okay, they're gone. They've made their choice. You have to remember that. There are those that are so evil, so wicked, that no matter what can happen, they've made their choice. Now, could the Lord still save them? Yes. Of course. And hopefully, in their destruction, maybe that will be what it takes for them to repent of their self-righteousness and to have sorrow for what they've done to the Lord and get saved. But there are those out there who are so evil, so wicked, and have made their choice, brethren. May the Lord destroy them. May the Lord destroy you, the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ. Unless you are broken of yourself. That's the hard part, isn't it? Isn't it? Let's continue. But after the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration, and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou can affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works, these things are good and profitable unto men. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable in vain. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, and being condemned of himself. When I shall send Artemis unto thee, or Tychicus, be diligent to come unto me to Nicopolis, for I have determined there to winter. Bring Zenus the lawyer and Apollos on their journey diligently, that nothing be wanting unto them. And let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses that they be not unfruitful. All they, all that are with me salute thee. Greet them that love us in the faith. Grace be with you all. Amen. Also true, brethren. Also true. Also too. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Let us not forget this one thing. First Corinthians chapter 16. Uh, let's begin at verses 19 on to the close of the chapter. The churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that is in their house. Proving churches uh, are the people 
not buildings. All the brethren greet you. Greet ye one another with an holy kiss. The salutation of me, Paul, with mine own hand. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema. Maranatha. What does anathema mean? Cursed. Cursed. Verse 23. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. My love be with all, my love be with you all in Christ Jesus. Amen. Look at verse 22 again. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema. Maranatha. Cursed. As a child of wrath, as a child of, of disobedience. Those of you who are not saved, born again, converted, you're cursed. You're cursed. Let him be accursed. Because you hate the Lord. And the wrath of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is upon you. You're a child of wrath. You're a child of disobedience. It doesn't pay for you to live by your own means. To be your own God. You're in danger. You're in danger. Do you understand that? If you're an enemy of our Lord, Jesus Christ, you have to remember that. Now, go to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. We have to read this. 1 John chapter 2. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light, and hateth his brother, is in darkness even until now. If you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you are my brother, and I am your brother. You are my sister, and I am your brother. Okay? You could have disagreements with those your brethren. Okay? Look at Paul and Barnabas over Mark. They had a contention, a doctrinal contention. And their contention between them was so sharp that they whoop, parted asunder. 
Okay? And brethren, I'm going to be honest with you. And I'm not speaking specifically of anyone that I know of, specifically here on YouTube. There are people out there who I know who are saved of the Church of the Living God who I love. I don't necessarily spend time with them or seek to be around them because we have disagreements, but he is my brother. I love him. Of the Church of the Living God. We are his bones and his flesh. Okay? Don't use this for an excuse or a crutch to hate someone who is truly saved, truly born again, converted of the church of the living God, just because they do something that you don't agree with. The scriptures are our standard, brethren. And who is my brother? Those who are saved. Uh, you from England, you are not my brother. You're lost. You're a devil. You're not my brother. A select few from Canada. You are not my brother. You're not my brother. Okay? But those who are our brethren, even though we have disagreements, might not talk to you, might not want to be around you, but if you're my brother, truly saved, born again of the church of the living God, you know, converted, I love you. My brother or sister. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 10. He that loveth his brother abideth in light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness, darkness hath blinded his eyes. Got to be really careful about justifying hating someone of the Church of the Living God. you got to be really careful about that. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the capital F Father. I have written unto you fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Now, notice here uh, from verse 15 under uh, verse 18, uh, talking about the world. Okay? Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists replace against whereby we know that it is the last time. Take a good look and gander out your window and out your door. You tell me. Look on the news. <laughs> look at all these false prophets. Uh, you tell me. You, you tell me. You tell me. Okay? Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, 
Even now are there many antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us. Who are the they? Antichrists. Fakes, you know? But they were not of us. For if they had been, been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. What is that unction? The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You know, and the Lord is that Spirit dwelling within you. Okay? I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whoso denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Referring on to the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, for those of us who are sealed unto the day of redemption, saved, born again, converted, you know. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Are you going to be ashamed at the judgment seat of Christ, Church of the Living God? Again, at the judgment seat of Christ, which is for those of us who are saved. Are you going to hear, well done, good and faithful servant? Or is he going to be ashamed? Just, just get in there. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Is born of him. Born of who? Our Father, Lord Jesus Christ. So, the scriptures tell us that we are to abhor that which is evil and to cleave to that which is good. We are to eschew evil, but we are also to expose that which is evil. And we are to judge ourselves first, according to the scriptures. Brethren, especially at this time, the enemies of our Lord are our enemies. We can witness unto them by the way we adhere our lives unto the scriptures. And if the Lord opens up a, a window of opportunity where you get a chance to put down a track, to witness, he orchestrates something for you that he may use you as his witness. That's why, brethren, always, I, I don't care if you're going out to your garage 
to get something. I don't care if you're going to the uh, to to your mailbox. Always have the scriptures on you. Get get a little pocket size one and just tuck it in on you someplace. It doesn't matter. Always be prepared. Always be armed with a sword. Always be armed and be ready. You never know. You never know. Um, a brother had asked me about this who, um, while making this video, uh, has co uh, contacted me. Um, I had attempted to make this video uh, a week or so ago on a Monday where I sat here all day and did five videos in one day. And one of them, this one, uh, malfunctioned it's because the Lord wasn't pleased with it. So hopefully this will answer the question that was asked about loving your enemies. Hopefully this will. Hopefully this will. But um, that's going to be it for this video. This is part two. Okay. Um, brethren, pray for one another. Pray for one another because things are getting really bad out there. So that's going to be it for this video. I love you. May our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be magnified. And thank you so much for watching if you do. I love you. And we will see you in the next video.